Hey, 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 this is Seagrove, and today I'm here with the Charizard Lounges, Andrew Wambolt, and the Untaken Sam <laughs> Chen, um, who has a real I'm job. So, <laughs> let's I'm on, um, I'm on like the non sponsored testing team. Yeah, you're, so you're the. Which, which team is that? It's XF. Oh, We're that's right, XF. XF. Right. Anyways, um, we're here for episode two of Beg to Differ, and it's very early in the morning, and um, we're going to be talking about the point structure for this season and the issues with it, and I'm going to be trying to disagree whenever I can, but we shall see how that goes. So, at the beginning of the year, Pokemon announces this year we're only going to have 400 points, and um, no caps on regionals and cups every quarter, just like the semester before. I mean, year before, except for we actually have them quarter one. Um, and I believe Sam said something like this in a tweet. Pokemon is the embodiment of two steps forward, one step forward and two steps back or something like that. Oh, boy. Um, just, I, I don't know. I just that? Remember, yeah, that was like a year ago. I just remembered it. Oh, I did say that. I'm pretty, something like that. <laughs> Anyways, so um, talk to us about um, what's wrong with the point structure. Um, whoever wants to start. Sam, um, I know you're passionate about this. Let's hear it. Okay. I mean, I think there's a there's a couple things wrong with the structure, right? I think um, I'm actually not. I I don't think the, a lot of people said, oh, the bottom end is too easy. Um, 400 is too low. I actually don't really care that much because um, I think, you know, Pokemon books a venue when they pick how many people they think are going to make worlds and they try to hit that target. So that's like out of my control. But I think one of the main problems I have with the existing system is that the strongest 16 players don't make top 16. In fact, the rankings, I think, are very much a function of who has the time and money to go to different events, especially since that they were, um, especially because they removed the best finish limit this year from the calculation. Um, I think uh, there's a lot of issues. I mean, that's the core issue. I think and there's a lot of side issues that uh, that emanate from that one core issue, and one is you know the burnout in uh, in a lot of the top 16. I mean, I've been talking to some of my friends who are in the chase for top 16. They're ranked in maybe the top 30 to 40. And there's definitely a burnout of, you know, having to go to every regionals. And if you don't, you basically fall another 30 points, 40 points behind yeah. from where you are before. And it becomes sort of a money game as opposed to a skill game. And that's, you know, and I should, <coughs> excuse me, I should caveat that by saying I think I'm on the greater beneficiaries of the system because I have a flexible work schedule that lets me travel on Fridays without taking, you know, half a day off. And I can, you know, I can basically go to every event. And I mean, it's just, I think it's just on a, on a basis of, of equity and, or, uh, and uh, just general fatigue. I don't think this system is, uh, is, is going to work long-term. Okay. Um, Wambolt, is there anything you want to add to that? Any obvious issues with the system? Yeah, I think, like Sam said, the core issue is that the top 16 invite structure just really limits the amount of people that can actually go for top 16 right now. So in past seasons, um, people would just start playing out their season, and then some players would just start having really good seasons and would be able to actually pursue top 16. But with the way it is now, especially with the internationals, as the season goes on and we have like Australia and Brazil, if you don't go to these tournaments, which cost a lot of money to go to, you just fall so far behind. So it kind of limits the number of players who actually are competing to, um, for top 16 to such a small number of players from the onset of the season. And I don't think that's very healthy for the game. Mm -hmm. Then I think um, the other issue they have with their system right now is they just implemented their structure very poorly. So League Cups, for example, like if you're in Ohio, you have League Cups two every weekend. So you have plenty of opportunities to play. But then you have other areas with like one or two League Cups per quarter. So... 
players in those areas don't really have the opportunity to play in League Cups. Yeah. I, I think League Cups are, you know, Andrew's absolutely right. League Cups are another huge problem with, uh, with the system, especially two things. One is the disparity in the difficulty of the League Cups, giving the same number of points. Right. And two is just the raw number of, you know, the raw number of weekends, the raw time it takes to attend these League Cups. Um, you know, and Andrew uh, uh, talked about the first point, right? There's, I'll give you an example. Uh, I'll pick on Brad because uh, Brad was supposed to make this call and he didn't make it today. But uh, um, Brad won an 11-person League Cup last year for 50 points, whereas one of my friends, Ross Cawthon, won a 168-person League Cup uh, last year for the same number of points. Uh, okay. There's definitely a disparity depending on where you are. I mean, I've experienced this too. Uh, early in the season, I went to a League Cup in SoCal. I'm, I'm in California right now, um, where there were like eight, like 75 or 80 people. Both Britons were there, Kenny and Christy, both Sosas, Israel and Sammy. Jake and Ben Wagner was there. Travis Dunlist was there. I think Mark Garcia was there. Uh, I so was three there. points, basically. Three points, right? And there's a bunch of you know people who are above average. Brian Ortiz, Jimmy Zhang. It's just a I mean, you could make a legitimate regional top eight out of you know, just the people at the <laughs> Cup, and no one would be surprised. Whereas a couple of weeks ago, I won a League Cup where I think there were like 27 people, and I basically just had to beat Azul in the finals. So it's like, there's such a disparity. I mean, they really need to fix this, this system if they're going to make 400 points mean something. Okay, well, before we get into ideas for fixes, um, last year there was a complaint among the masses that um, with 500 points in League Cups and um, the way the system was moving, that you could pay, basically, if you were at a certain skill level, you could pay to get an invitation to Worlds just by going to enough um, regionals and stuff. And that was sort of scoffed at. Uh, by upper level players who said, well, you need to show that you're committed with your time and your money um, to get your world invite. And now this year, the top level players are saying, well, you can just pay to get uh, top 16. And um, why is that argument not fit this, but it fit that? Or did it fit that? If I mean, you know I, what I mean. Was, oh, sorry, Andrew. I think um, Pokemon's always been a game where you can kind of pay your way to invite. Even like when we had stricter best finish limits, you'd see people like pay money to fly to like Idaho for state championship to find easier tournaments for points. And um, since we moved to championship points instead of using premier rating for invites, um, since just as you accumulate points and um, no one's taken an invite over anyone else. Um, you, If you put in the time and money to keep going to events and you're above average, you can definitely, you should definitely be able to get the invite. But um, that's not necessarily a problem because Worlds is split into two phases yeah. and getting the day one invite isn't really that valuable compared to the day two invite. You have to pretty much go through a regional day one, basically, to move on to the actual um, real part of the world championship. Yeah, I, I, I agree with what Andrew said. And I think a point that he uh, he's underscored but didn't explicitly say is that there's a huge cliff, right? Last year, I think, I don't even know what, top, what the cutoff for top 16 was. It was like 1,200 something. There was literally no benefit to accrue any number of championship points between 400 and 1200. Like you basically play your whole season, you know, your 17th or 21st or whatever in the United States, and you do the same. You get the same reward at the end of the year, same recognition as someone who barely scraped by and you know had to chase regionals in the end of the year to sort of complete their 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 point totals for the season. Um, I don't think that's very fair. Uh, and I certainly don't think that's a healthy and sustainable way for, for the structure to continue. And I think even last year, I thought um, with the best finish limit of regionals going up to eight, I was thinking like top 64 is 50 points. So, and cities give 50 points or else you top four get 30 points. Like 
it's very much uh, very much uh, you can pay to get to, to, to 500 points or however many points they end up reducing it to 350 or something. So I, I think I've always had a always had a problem with this system. I just this year I think the the issues are exacerbated with the removal of the best finish limit from regionals altogether and internationals altogether. Okay, well, I think another thing, uh, sort of tied to what you're saying, actually, is you're preventing other people from getting top 16 if you get top 16. And there's um, supposedly an infinite amount of uh, day one invites available. Yeah. Um, so now let's talk about fixes. So, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, yeah, this is kind of a fix, but something that hasn't ever really been talked about is that um, North America doesn't have enough automatic day two invites. We have the bigger biggest player base by far, but we don't get um, the most day two invites. Europe gets 22 day two invites. And like if you proportion it based on like um, player base sizes um, to be level with Europe, you'd be looking at there being around like 50 to 60 players oh, wow. from the US and Canada getting automatic two invites um so part of it is uh system is unfairly harsh on um north american players just because the system set up in a way for pokemon to be paying for some players to be able to travel to um worlds and they only want to give so many people help in doing that sure. um so one one thing they could do is increase the number of day two invites, but separate um, some of the day two invites, the additional ones they'd add from any travel support to it, the world championship. Okay. And then uh, another potential fix is just to keep it as top 16, but um, certain placements like top 32 might get two buys during day one of worlds and so you could use buys to yeah. help deal with that clip from top 16 to everyone else that makes a lot of sense was your first suggestion um like top 16 gets paid travel and then the rest get day two but don't get paid travel is that what i understood yeah okay because i assume like a lot of the reasons for some of the weirder stuff and the structure is just budget issues. So, right. like, the organized play team uses their budget and make decisions based on that. So I'd assume there's not more room in the budget to pay for um, more people to do it. So that'd be how you have to do it. But um, theoretically, the overall company, which makes, like, 4 or $5 billion <laughs> a year, yeah. could easily spring to cover some more trips. Um, but I think the overall company really limits organized plays budget, which um, leads to a lot of the problems in the system. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, did the, I did the math really quickly when Andrew was talking about it. I actually wasn't going to talk about this point, but since it's been brought up, right, the North America is, is basically a slaughterhouse for getting to your day two invite. Um, if you do it by ratio, and I'm looking at the total number of people with championship points this year, I know this is just a proxy, maybe not the best metric, right. but um, mm -hmm. if you just look at the number of people with championship points, there's about 1,350 in Europe and 3,550 in North America. Okay. So that means if, did the, if they did the day two invites equitably, then the North America would get 18 day two invites and Europe would get six instead of 22. So there's also, I mean, that's a common American complaint. I know Europeans like to say, you know, those entitled, those entitled Americans think they should be. But I mean, it's, it's, it, I think it's, um, it's a fair point that, uh, that you know, Pokemon just. The reason there's 22 day two invites is because the, when they switched from uh, giving national champions a stipend, to or giving national champions a trip to the day two invite system, well, they looked at the total number of trips. Right in the European rating zone and sort of reduced that to a number. And then the U.S., they sort of just said, well, you know, top 16, you know, it seems, seems reasonable. So I, I think the initial decision was, 
I don't know how much thought they put into it, but from a third party perspective, it certainly thinks it certainly appears it was sort of a thoughtless decision. Um, uh, yeah, so that sucks. And I think another, I know I'm rambling a little bit, but no, another, issue, another issue with the championship point system that neither of us have talked about is the fact that the rating zone situation is really, really screwed up. Um, <laughs> we have, I obviously, I think, you know, first of all, I want to say that every player within the set of rules that TPCI has set out should use their resources to chase whatever makes them happy and chase their goals. And I don't blame anyone for, you know, doing anything they've done. But, uh, you know, scheduling League Cups on a Wednesday, random Wednesday before the, the, the stipend period or a League Challenge, you know, a random Thursday or whatever it is, allowing yeah. people to go play, you know, 100 person or, you know, less than 20 people special events to get 150 championship points. I mean, there's going to be special events in Mexico this year that if you can afford the flight out to Cancun or whatever, you can basically get a much easier road to championship points. I mean, they just didn't think this international travel thing out uh, very well. Um, you know, if I, if I, if I'm close in the hunt, I might go to a regional in Australia, um, you know, go win, go win myself for top four or top eight, you know, an 80 person regional in right. Western Australia, who knows, you know, like it's just not, it's not a very well thought out system that accommodates the fact that many people now are traveling internationally, internationally to play this game. Okay. Um, that might not necessarily be something Pokemon doesn't like, but I think it could come back to bite them. Um, what's, let's talk about League Cups first. There's, you said there's a huge disparity between League Cups. Um, I think both of you all touched on that. What can be done to, uh, to fix that? So, um, one thing, just as far as getting League Cups to different areas is Pokemon needs to look at how many players live in an area and make cups available based on that, not based on the number of stores. Mm -hmm. um, so for in St. Louis, for example, we don't have a lot of stores that support Pokemon. Right. Um, like we have Yeti Gaming, which um, is like the main Pokemon league for the entire city. So we don't have all these other smaller stores just because we have one store that's doing it so well that there's no reason for anyone to want to play anywhere else, really. Okay. But the issue we come into then is we only have a limited number of stores that can get League Cups. So we end up with, like, two League Cups, even though we might have, like, the sixth or seventh biggest player base in the country. Wow. And so what they could do is um, give certain stores multiple League Cups per quarter. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you have a store with lots of attendance for its League, you could give them, like, three or four League Cups per quarter just so you can meet the demand for that area. And then That's uh, the other thing is there's stores that only have capacity for like 20 people that are being granted League Cups. Yeah. And that creates a like size disparity where like some League Cups are basically League Challenges and then other ones are like state championship yeah. size. Um, so Pokemon probably... Like, there's not really a good way to do it because you don't want to, from a business perspective, you don't want to get rid of stores um, supporting your game. Right. But um, there should be maybe some difference in championship points for very small ones and very big ones. Yeah, it has I want to represent that difference in size. Okay. Yeah, I want to jump on Andrew's last point, I think, is really good, uh, which is that uh, I think there there could be a gradient for the number of championship awarded based on attendance at League Cups. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've grown into this system of, you know, back then before the League Cups were city championships and you have best finish limit of four per year and then it's, you know, 50 points for winnings, 40 points for getting second and so on. So they've more or less kept the same structure and just sort of split it across four quarters. So eight best finishes. 
But I think that's an antiquated system, right? Uh, the silly championships, city championships, except for marathon events, got way fewer attendance numbers than League Cups on average. Um, it's possible to make a disparity. So, for example, you can say that um, I'm just just uh, spitballing a little bit. But let's say in each quarter you can get up to 120 championship points from League Cups and a best finish limit of three or something like that. Obviously, I don't want to play more Pokemon, but you know what it is what it is. And winning is 50 points if you have at least X people. Winning is 40 points if you have at least Y people. Winning is 30 points if you have Z people in your League Cup. So you can still realistically piece together your full cap of championship points right. uh, without, uh, you know, without, w- without screwing over the stores and organizers who are <laughs> eager to grow the community. And another idea is perhaps have a universal uh, count for League Cups or maybe split it into half years instead of full years or sorry, half years instead of quarters, even a full year, a best finish limit of eight with a maximum of championship points you can get from League Cups at 350, you know, keep the existing structure, but if there's less than 30 people, winning gets you 40 points. If there's less than, you know, 20 people, winning gets you 30 points. I don't know. I, mean, I obviously haven't done the math yet. I actually have a spreadsheet where I sort of did this, but it's, um, the ideas obviously aren't ready to present or it's not a, right. I haven't got all the details. You don't have your PowerPoint finished yet. I don't have the PowerPoint finished yet, but I, I mean, I think we've outgrown the good old 50 championship points for winning structure. We've certainly outgrown that as a, yeah. as a, as a, we have pretty small cups here, like 25 sometimes. And then we have a store that caps at 32 and then sometimes it's 25, sometimes it's 50 people. It just depends on the day. It's like, mm-hmm. anyways, so let's get into, um, regionals then and the best finish limit being taken away and i think this touches well actually let's not first let's talk about top 16 and how top 16 should be rewarded awarded i'm sorry so um i i think top 16 should be considered what players do at the major event level so i think you should just eliminate um, league cups and league challenges from, and maybe even special, at least in uh, um, North America, North I don't America. think special yeah. events should count, but I know in Europe, they're kind of like su- supplemental to the regionals, so you could um, count them there, but um, we don't really have many of them, so it's not a big issue, but basically um, top 16 probably should be decided just from regionals and internationals okay. and then it, what about, I al- go ahead sorry yeah and i also think that you should be competing within your own rating zone for this and um internationals is the uh, um exception to that because they do want people to be traveling um to different internationals but i think um this is where best finish limits really need to be taken into account. And I think internationals should have a best finish limit of one just because I think um, the system should allow for someone to just be able to get their day two invite for their rating zone from competing within their own rating zone. And so if you have someone who only goes to North, American internationals, they're not going to be able to compete against people getting points from four different internationals. And while if you have a best finish limit of one, it devalues some of those um, foreign internationals, it's still more valuable and advantageous to go to those because they're going to be easier than the NAIC. So people who do travel to all of them will still have some advantage over the person who only goes to um, the NAIC, but it won't be as big of an advantage as it is right now. Yeah. Let me ask you this before I go to Sam. What um, what about regionals um, disparity, like Memphis versus San Jose or Vancouver? Should uh, yeah. there be different so, points there? Yeah. I think just like um, we talked about for League Cups, um, based on different attendances, there should be some um, differences in the points. Is winning a 
thousand person regionals different than winning a 200 person regional um i don't really know what the point difference should be so maybe it's just something as small as like 250 points versus 200 for winning but i could see arguments for it being a bigger disparity as well okay uh sam what are your thoughts on that yeah, I mean, I, I have a bunch of ideas that I think would be better than the current system. I mean, I agree with, per, <clears throat> personally, I agree that League Cups and League Challenges should be removed from the top 16 in contention. It's just no way to reasonably make it, you know, to differentiate the 16 best players if you include League Cups and League Challenges. It's it's sort of like a chore to have to go to League Cups. I mean, if you talk to anyone rated right in the top 30, I think you're going to find maybe five people who are excited to play more Pokemon, like 10 people who are indifferent and 15 people who view it as a chore to have to, you know, play more Pokemon, especially those who have jobs uh, or yeah. kids. So uh, in terms of, in terms of finish fixing the best finish limit, I wouldn't mind internationals and regionals being on the same best finish limit scale um, based on pop and with Lampold's idea of population uh, or of, uh, participation triggers. Um, for for awarding points, I wouldn't even mind an exponential scale, but I don't think anyone at TPCI is interested in doing that. Um, just you know, if they can't even they can't even differentiate who the top sixteen players were by quarter, uh, so how can they you know use math to do anything else? But uh, math is hard. I think yeah, I mean I, I think. Uh, um, Reducing the best finish limit for regionals or even making day two competition only if you can only get points for the day two competition for making top eight at um, regionals or top 16 at regionals. I mean, the fact that I mean, I got what I got top 128 in, in San Jose and I got a nice what like 30, 40, I don't even know, 30 championship points, like top 64. Yeah, I got 40 championship points for 128. So only uh, top eights or only day twos count? I, I mean, maybe at, maybe at a larger regional top 32 get points. I mean, I, I actually honestly like Lampold's system better um, at the Charizard Lounge than the way TPCI is doing it. I mean, if you, I top 64 to Memphis, but I mean, that's, do I really deserve 50 championship points for that effort, especially when it counts towards day two? Yeah. So I, I think this is where just having best finish limits would really help. So if you had like best finish limit of like six or seven, at some point, um, that like top 64, 50 points probably doesn't matter too much just because other people are going to have better finishes than that 50 points. Um, it was like uh, three years ago, I think, when we last had the best finish limit of four, like it became a competition of putting up the best finishes instead of just getting a ton of finishes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it could be that the same players are going to end up on top, but in terms of the burnout of uh, you know, having to travel to, I mean, I'm planning on going to 13 out of the 14 regionals. There's one I can't go to because of work. Um, I'm planning on going to all four internationals just because I probably I, I can, I guess. So it's like it's I'm I'm. I recognize that I'm at a massive advantage compared to people who are still like in college or in grad school or even, you know, working with a kid and they can't just say, oh, hey, you know, hey, boss, I'm going to take a random week off in, in April to go to Brazil to play Pokemon. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, it's, I, I just think Pokemon needs to think about the length of the season. Um, okay. One, one idea I, I, I had at some point was, for them to decide on a number of weekends, a maximum number of weekends that people should be playing Pokemon a year. Whether that number is, you know, there's 50, there's about 52 weekends 22. in a year. 22. 22 is about a, just over a third. I think that's a very reasonable number. Um, and let's, so let's go with your idea of 22. So they should structure a season such that a player who goes to every single possible way to chase whatever the maximum goal is to chase would not have to play more than 22 weekends of Pokemon in a tournament scene um, for for the season. Like realistically, obviously. I mean, you can if you get 50 championship points every every league cup, which is unrealistic, then you know maybe you need less. But I think you know I, I did the calculation. 
um, on a Facebook post a couple weeks ago. Right now, you'll basically need to be spending over half of your year playing Pokemon um, if you want to go for if you want to give yourself the best shot at top sixteen. I mean, I would even argue that the number should be lower. I mean, no hobby should take up every other weekend or every right. third weekend. Um, um, reasonably and, and not expect the, the the fan base to be burned out by right. by their structure and so that's your argument to tpc tpci yes uh if they say okay well i'm glad that you're going to so many regionals that you're going to all the regionals almost you're going to all the internationals that's exactly what we want we want um uh, sam chen representing uh the game we want him his face at all these regionals at all these internationals and at league cups for his local uh scene and then it, your response is what well sam chen is not going to be playing in all local league cups and regionals next year next year i'm actually going to take a break i'm going to go to four internationals try to get my 500 points there <laughs> call it a season um i've been burned out i think they've successfully burned me out and i have probably one of the most out of the play of top players that i talk to the most flexibility in terms of resources and time to travel and they burn me out so congratulations i mean i i think there's there's many players uh you'll you'll notice there's some turnover in top 16 um i'll give a couple names because they've spoken out on it but like keon for example i think is one of the best players in north america he's not really going for top 16 this year there's too many east coast regionals to he's to get a 14 when there's yeah. you know sponsored players going to all 14 of them it's and he lives in california that's just unrealistic for him so um I think if their goal is, you know, they're, they're very short-sighted if they think this uh, this structure can perpetuate over over many seasons. And I think you, you'll see this uh, you'll see this more clearly nowhere else than in the lower age divisions and the juniors and seniors. I've talked to parents who believe that uh, their kid just has no chance to you know to chase top sixteen. The, there's no chance to be ultra competitive because there are some parents who have the resources to take their juniors to as many regionals. Or seniors to as many regionals as they can and you know, right. some parents can't do that in fact doing this you you might be creating superstars in the in the masters division not only are you burning out those superstars you're discouraging um bright young juniors and seniors who may be at the top of the game um, but they don't have the resources to chase uh to chase the the, the accolades uh, as some others do and so i mean power to the parents who are willing to take their kids to all these events i know i do the same so it's uh, I'm not not criticizing you saying you know you shouldn't do whatever you, you can for your child. I'm just saying that from a top down perspective, the Pokemon company needs to look at the structure and say you're you're burning out a lot of people. This is not sustainable. All right. So Wambolt, you've been quiet for a bit. Do you agree with most of what he's saying? Just yes or no. Do you agree with most of what he's saying? Yeah. Okay, so let's work on a suggested system like Start from League Challenges and League Cups. How many points does a player need for Worlds? Um, what's the best finish limit? Are we doing quarters or no? Let's build a system, and then we'll end, we'll end after that. So okay. are we going back to cities and states, or are we keeping uh, Cups? Uh, well, I think the old system is like just strictly better for Pokemon than what we have now. But you... I also understand um, we will not be going back that direction. Okay. Just because um, Pokemon used to subsidize the entire structure, and now they just dumped everything off on stores, um, all the costs. So. Okay, then let's stick with cups. But but starting with um, league challenges, I think they should just get rid of league challenges entirely. I don't see. They don't um, serve their point as an entry-level competitive tournament since they're not really worth any serious points. Mm -hmm. And um, they've just kind of been replaced by League Cups as a entry-level to yeah. competitive play. And then um, something else is, like, League Cups have just been administered so poorly. Like, supplies aren't being sent out. Um, there's not enough of them. So if you eliminate league challenges, you can um, take some of the resources that you're putting towards that, both money and yeah. time of their employees, and put that into league cups to make sure those are functioning properly. Um, but 
league challenges just have no real point oh, for the. What I, I guess they do oddly right now because people are using them for like top sixteen points in a pinch, which is ridiculous. But um, in general, they don't <laughs> serve <laughs> much of a point anymore. In San Jose, I purposely chose not to play in the Sunday League Challenge in the off chance that I could make top four if I won because I was so categorically sick of, of, of League Challenges as a, as a thing. I mean, I do think League Challenges serve a purpose, but they serve a purpose for such a small segment of the community um, that it could be repurposed. You know, um, they, I know um, obviously Pokemon doesn't, uh, isn't a very good game to draft but even having you know a, a, a league challenge where there's alternate formats for people to play for fun, and this was all predicated on the season shortening a lot. Um, okay. you know, in, in 2012, I, I there were only two weekends of regionals, believe it or not. There was one in the fall, one in the spring. There were at most six weekends of cities, three weekends of states, I think, and there was nationals and worlds. Right. So I didn't get my Pokemon fix. So I actually went to all four pre-releases just to play more Pokemon and like have some fun. And, and um, and uh, you know test a little bit with the newer cards. And, I mean that's mm -hmm. all gone. There's no. I'm not going to a tournament unless there's a express purpose for right. in terms of championship points. So um, I've actually experimented with an idea where uh, when it comes to league cups, instead of saying you have to you get points for what playing or whatever, you get points for you get like one or you get let's say like. 40 points for top eight, and anything you finish above top eight just doesn't count. So, like, if maybe at a smaller league cup, it's top four or whatever. So you just have to play in and top eight, you know, and you cannot drop, obviously, um, but you have to play your full way through out of, to, you know, in eight league, eight league cups or ten league cups a year, which encourages top-level players then to go to league cups and play fun decks. Like, I'd only be playing Gorgeist and Vikabulu if I didn't. Have to you know have to win if I if I knew I could just like top eight and get some points I would try out some fun decks I think they need to shorten the season when it comes to to league cups and league challenges um, Andrew's tiered system of championship points and based on attendance also works Sorry I kind of derailed it by a, <laughs> a little rant but okay so for cups um, I didn't understand that you're saying you get like forty points whether you win or get top eight Yeah okay. So playing through the cup, and then they can incentivize people from wanting to win cups by giving like a, a good promo or something, like okay. a good card. For, for, I don't, so, I yeah, don't that suspect was, that will happen though. I mean, obviously, it's, it's obviously not going to happen. The league cups are going to stick around. So whatever Andrew and I say is is moot. But I think the one area where we do have a chance to to make good changes in the regional and international structure. Okay. Um, one of the things Sam just said is one of the things Pokemon does poorly relative to every game, and that's um, prize promos. It's like the easiest way to for the company not to spend any real money, but significantly increase the prize support for their tournaments. So imagine if they had like um, Shaman EX when it's bigger, Tapu Lele GX right now, and you win a League Cup and you get this first place stamp Tapu Lele uh, GX promo and and they could do like alternate arts to really set them apart and like almost every other game does this so it's really odd that Pokemon isn't really doing it they mm -hmm. kind of do it for league challenges but um, the other games choose like their actual best cards while the league challenge promos usually aren't all that great Mew. Um, yeah, but yeah, so if you have like a Tapu Lele GX alternate art stamped first place promo, that card might sell for like two hundred dollars, right. but it costs the company like three cents to make. <laughs> so yeah. they essentially created like a two hundred dollar prize for their tournament at, right. for three cents. Right, so, and they'd have lim they could limit supply too, and they could they could. There's so many other things they can do with it, like releasing. I know the promo, the new promo Tapu Lele is is going through its share of issues with unions and workers and all that. I obviously won't speculate too much on it, but if that were given as a prize for you know finishing in the finals or first and second place at league challenges or at league league uh, league cups, yeah, I go to I go to a couple of league cups, pick up my copies and and get you know 
get some of my League Cup finishes out of the way at the same sure. time. I think there are so many other things they can incentivize. Um, so what yeah. if what if basically what Andrew said? So what if we go to like six best finish limits total, yeah. and then you do yeah. Um, yeah. spring, yeah. summer, and winter? Is that how they did it before? Um, so the way they did it before was just city championships, right. which were just um, one set of like eight weekends in winter. And I actually feel um, kind of bad for the whole League Cup thing. I actually sent um, TPC's I a suggestion at one point saying that city championships are their best tournaments and they should do it um, multiple times a year. And um, they I agree. kind of did that with League Cups. But they just like took everything great about city championships and took that out of league cups, and so now we just have these awful local events. Um, but I do like the idea of um, kind of eliminating the summer quarter from it, like by lowering the best finish limit to six. And I would not be bad if they didn't also schedule five regionals in six weeks, which was last year. And I think it's like five and seven weeks this year, something like that. Okay. Like, come on. Like, so let's, let's move on to regionals. At, well, on the League Cup thing, I do like just having one best finish limit because um, then players don't have to um, be stressed of trying to play throughout the year and they can just find the times throughout the season right. that work best for them to target down League Cups. So we're doing that. Six League Cups, and um, they'll have some we're available, some. except for in the summer. Cool? They, they can be available in the summer. Oh, yeah. just, sure. They can do whatever just, they just want. By, yeah, Six just by eliminating universal. the best finish limit, yeah. it helps you not have to be stressed to try to play in League Cups when okay. you're trying to play in regionals so, back-to-back to back weekends. So for the people like me, what are we doing with the, um, now that we have, I guess that's fine. And then you can just get a maximum 300 from League Cups, and then you still have to get 100 if we keep it at 400 from Regionals. And then Regionals, let's talk Regionals. What do you guys think? Six? I think six is yeah. good. Six, six or five. Six is reasonable. Or even if they want to encourage people to go to internationals, which I know they do, because it's their like flagship events in each continent. You, you can share make, it. You could share best finish limit of regionals, internationals, and worlds to eight, perhaps. If, or I mean, six. I, I, or six. Yeah. Please, keep six. it at six, and then include, or even seven, and then keep, and then yeah. include internationals in that, and then. Top sixteen doesn't care, doesn't count. Only what you do at majors counts, b- being regionals, internationals, and then. Um, so you have two tracks of championship points. You have your right. overall championship points, and you have your. They can call it whatever they want. Pro points. They can call it their you know elite you know elite four points or whatever you know gym leader points. They can say any. They can call it anything they want. You know if if a regional is over. Over three uh, over four hundred people. Top 32 gets points if they have less than, or maybe they can even do it by the power of two. Like if yeah. they have under 256, then only top eight gets points. Under 512, top 16 get points. If they have more than 512, then um, or you, less than 1024, 10, 10, then you know, top, top 32 64. gets points. Okay, yeah. cool. So, so like there's so many ways they can do it. It's just it needs to I mean, happen. I've heard, I've heard all types of reasons for why they don't, and I think if people in the community can export this data onto spreadsheets and do alternate calculations, someone at Pokemon can figure out how to run a query on the damn database <laughs> and change change the system. So, And they should give stipends internationals based on quarterly performance instead of... Instead of... Um, instead of... Uh, Cumulative. Yeah. yeah. Andrew, go ahead. What were you going to say? Yeah, I do like the like a distinction of two different points and i like the idea of pro points and championship points and um pro points like if you made something called pro points they don't have to be the same as championship points so you could do some different calculation stuff just based on that so 
say you win Vancouver regionals, you get 200 championship points. You win Memphis regionals, you get 200 championship points for that. But in the pro points, you could introduce the disparity in attendance and say give 250 pro points for winning Memphis, but only 150 pro points for winning Vancouver. Just to um, more balance use that as a since you're using it for the day two invites and um presumably travel stipe and stuff you'd want to try to calculate in the difficulty of the tournaments more so which isn't really being taken into account at all by championship points right now yeah so uh i like i like the thoughts here, I think a lot of people share the same sentiments and um, hopefully we can do something about it, like maybe even a ticket storm or something as the, uh, if the new announcement, the announcement comes for next season and it's, it's not an improvement. Um, before we end, is there anything else you guys want to talk about, about on this topic? Um, so I don't think support ticket storms do anything. <laughs> I'm not even sure if there's anyone really reading them seriously. I think they might have like an intern that goes through them and just picks out like anything that looks like super bold that they really need to pay attention to. Um, but I think they do have people reading like websites and stuff. So if people like actually um, spend some time um, writing out their thoughts and um presenting their arguments for how and why things should change, that'd be a lot more effective than sending in a okay. support ticket. And that also has the added benefit of um, putting it out in public, which does um, help apply some pressure onto the company because they want to look, look good, good from a PR standpoint. Sure. Um, so they want to look like they're responding to what their player base wants so that's more effective than a uh, private communication that they don't seem to really respond to in any way yeah, I, I agree with Wambolt I think uh, I, I'm not sure like if they have like a sheep or a cat or a dog responding to support tickets um, I mean they just canceled right like a year's worth of or maybe six months worth of support tickets a couple of months ago Supposedly they hired someone else, but hopefully it's a That's human. What I heard. Uh, yeah. So I'm not I'm not hopeful for a support ticket storm to okay. to achieve. It seemed to yeah, obviously it could have just been coincidence, but it seemed to work um, last year with the prize money. But it also could have just been, like you said, it was seen in a public place because it was posted on it was pinned on one of the I guess Verbank, um, and then could have been that or it could have just been coincidence but who knows well i think another thing with that was like arizona regionals was such a disaster <laughs> and like you had people on like i know i wrote about that i wrote about how ridiculous the prize money was with third place only getting 250 um yeah. at that regionals and then like six prizes and um, 60 cards they also wrote about this stuff and so um when you have like that public um saying like we went to your regional event and it is complete garbage i think um and like obviously you don't want to be like i went to memphis and this is garbage because it's a great event yeah but it was. when like you have a legitimate claim um for them providing a bad experience i do I do think the people that work there do um, actually care to try to put out a better system. Um, I'm not sure if the people they have working are always the uh, most effective employees or if they have the resources available to make all the changes they want. But um, I think in general, they do have people that do want to try to improve the system. So that can be worked with sure all right well um thank you guys so much for your time and for staying up late uh to do this with me um 
Andrew, why don't you go ahead and give any plugs or anything you want to give? Um, just check out the website um, in the next week for a couple of articles. I'm going to have one looking over a few expanded things, um, looking at a few different decks um, that I've been looking at, um, Seismitoad, Zoroark, GX, and then Darkrai, Dragons. Um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure <coughs> if these are the best, but I've been, uh, I had these decks as independent thoughts, and I've seen them on PTCGO from other people, so they are some new things that um, people are going to want to be considering, at least trying to deal with them as they head towards Dallas. Then I'm going to have another article that's a deck profile on Quad Wabafet in um, standard format, which is a really um, fun deck, and it's okay. Um, It's starting to see some success at the League Cup level, so um, I won't call it Tier 1 or even Tier 2, but you can theoretically get championship points with it, and um, and from my own testing with it, it is um, pretty solid if you um, play it right, so I think it does have some decent potential in some meadows, so just um, be on the lookout for those two articles. Two points there. First of all, I have a friend and a testing partner, Chris, who uh, keeps pushing <laughs> quad wob. It's like, you have to play. This is amazing. So um, shout out to Chris. And then uh, secondly, that website is thecharizardlounge.com. So definitely check it out. Uh, Sam, go ahead. Yeah, I don't have anything to plug, but uh, look out for Chris's expanded core guy, or Andrew's uh, <laughs> expanded core guy article. I look forward to it myself. Solid. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Sam Stoyce, uh, and uh, have a happy New Year, everyone. Hopefully, uh, TPCI reduces best finish limits. That would nothing would make me happier. Merry and, Christmas. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, subscribe. Bye. <laughs>